Hi everyone, welcome to Joy Fido International. My name is Joy Fido and welcome on board. Okay, so today we're going to talk about another interesting topic and the topic is understanding life. Understanding life. This, this has come to me as an absolute necessity. I mean, if you recall, we did do um, a program on a book that we called um, The Purpose Driven Life. And over time, I, I consistently try to find out what, what, what is the reason for life? What is the reason for life? Why are we here? But the messages come really clear. Um, God wanted us to come here and create an exciting world. Remember the story, he created things up to the seventh day he rested. And then God decided, let us make man in our own image. And so he created us. And then Genesis uh, um, chapter 1 verse 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So, man, come over to the earth, be fruitful, replenish the earth, subdue everything that I've created. So, he wanted us to come here and make the world exciting. Everything he had not done, go and finish it off. And that's why you hear people say, that person has the spirit of God in him. That person has the spirit of God in him. So, when God is walking through you, you have a purpose. Your purpose is to do great things, to make the place, make the world a good place. And you know, further down the Bible, it says we're here for a short period, 70 years, 80 years. So you know that this is not it. It doesn't be, it's not be all and end all. Here is not where everything ends. We're here for a short period and then we leave. Just the same way we arrived, we would just go. And you know when a child is born, a child comes with nothing. There's no child that was born and they say, oh, that child was holding a bag of money. And that child was wearing clothes. And that child was, we all come completely empty. And the same thing happens when we're going as well. When the person leaves, the person goes with nothing. So everything we've created, remember go here and multiply, everything we've created on this earth is left here. Because the whole point wasn't to come here and go and collect things and go and give to God. No, he has everything. So he just sent you here, come and enjoy the world, have fun, multiply, make it a better place, and then come back home after a certain number of years. Now. Why I decided to look at this, uh, create this video is lots of us get this message wrong. We misunderstand life. And we think that life is just about us. And then what we tend to do is we are constantly chasing and chasing and chasing and we don't care who is on the way because we are going to kill that person we are going to stamp and uh, trample over that person we are going to get angry with people we are going to be envious we are going to be jealous and we're going to be and so we just take on all the negatives and that's when you hear about evil because for everything there is an opposite so there's good which is god then there's the opposite which is evil so evil takes us over, and then what do we do? We start creating confusion. So the world that was supposed to be fun and exciting and contribute and create new things and enjoy your life suddenly becomes a pain to the point that some people actually end up their life. They kill themselves. They commit suicide. Because the pains of the world takes over. And you know what's so sad about the pains of the world? Because there are people who think, oh, you know, God is so unfair to me. God hasn't helped me to do this. God, none of that is God made. All the problems we deal with on this earth are man-made 
true devil. Devil possessing people to come and cause problems. So, I just wish we can understand life. I just wish we can understand life. Because I have been through this. I've been through this. Come from a, a very, 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 very zero, zero, lowly beginning. From little village in, in Bori, uh, 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 Ogoni, River State, Nigeria. And then I started from nothing. <coughs> and slowly growing. Get education, get informed. Realize I could talk. Because when I say I could talk, I, I have, I, I naturally hate injustice. That's what I mean that I can talk. That's what I mean by a voice. Because I realize I have a voice. And this is not today. I've been like this right from secondary school. I remember I was a senior prefect in my school and my, my head teacher came and, and you know, beat me up that I had students going out of the school and, and why didn't I stop them? And these students were like three times my size. I said, but you saw the students go out. Why don't you query them? Why are you querying me? And then I gave him a piece of my mind. And it's been carrying on because when I worked in Nigeria as well, worked in banks, these banks, typical Nigerian attitude to life, they're busy siphoning customers' funds and putting it in their personal accounts. And I queried it too. Because I can't deal with injustice. And then, of course, the Ogoni crisis started. When again, Ken Sarewa put himself out there and started expo you know, exposing all the injustice that was going on in Nigeria, still going on till today. Because the reason this video has come out is, how do you allow youths to get involved with cultism to the point now you're killing innocent people unnecessarily because you politician want to keep the wealth of the country in your own hands and allow the country to get to rot this is embarrassing and I'm, and I'm speaking my heart out right now because Nigerians and 200 million people and you sit there and you allow these people to do this? All over the world, people are waking up to reality. When you find that you're being led by people who do not have your interest at heart, you do not give them, give them a chance to get there. That's the voice you have. The voice to vote and vote the right people. I know it's like a disease in that country right now that everybody who gets into power just wants to amass all the wealth to themselves. But we still can salvage that country. We still can talk. Because to imagine that this is the tiniest of local village level where this, this village is not, I'm sure it's not up to 5,000 people. And somebody cannot tell them when they are going wrong to the point you now get that person assassinated. This is the tiniest village level. Imagine when we're thinking local government level or we're not thinking state level or we're thinking country level. What would they do to you? But I'm saying to you, politician, you need to understand that this life does not belong to you. This, this life is not yours. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. I was listening to a tape the other day and Les Brown was saying, nobody lives this world alive. Nobody lives life alive. That's a big message everybody needs to get. So while you're busy stealing billions to lock in some bank account in Switzerland or Zurich or wherever for your generations unborn, you are going to leave that money behind. And you know the sad thing, just like it was with the case with Abacha, the country holds on to it. Switzerland holds on to it. Whichever country you've stolen that money to, they hold on to 
money, they don't let go of it. Why can you leave that money in this country, Nigeria, and let them be used to help the poor people? Let it be used to create infrastructure. Let it be used to create employment. Let it be used to develop people. Because when the people are developed, you are developed. The country is developed. You politicians are getting to the plane and traveling all over the world, but human beings created those countries where you are visiting. Human beings created them. In the sense of they created the infrastructure you're going there to use. They created the roads. They created the water. The electricity. They put it together. It was their idea. Right now, a tiny country as small as Qatar is going to host the world in football 2022. That is something that Nigerian, I don't know how many years to come we will ever dream of such a thing. Because for starters, we don't even have an airport. We do not have an airport. It is a shame. And rulers have come and gone in that country every time you hear president, vice president, and state go. River State has not got even where people, you come out to the airport, your baggage is under the, the rain. If it's raining, your baggage comes out, it's in the rain. And that is the, that is the state that has so much money in Nigeria. Is that not a shame on you? Whoever you are that is the state governor, Whoever you are that's the president of this country. And then innocent souls are killed because they open their mouth. But you are going to die. And where will you go with that money? Nobody goes anywhere with a pin. When you die, your soul goes away. Your soul. That's all that lives. Soul. The soul does not go with anything. That's why this message is for you understand life the message was go ye and multiply multiply the earth grow the earth grow the youths give them knowledge empower them give them jobs so they can be useful so we can create a better country so our children don't keep running into the, the, the sea in some shanty canoes and be traveling on high dangerous seas and dying their blood is on your head mr politician you sit there and allow nigerian youths to become absolutely useless whatever happens to them is on your head because you have not thought about their future all you're thinking about is your children you take private jets, you take them from here to there. They go and buy, I hear children will leave Nigeria just to go and buy tea bag in England. Tea bag. Because they don't sell tea bag in Nigeria. People will leave Nigeria to come for medical checkup in England or America. Because we don't have educated or, or trained doctors in Nigeria. Now what could have been the difference? If you had put infrastructure there, can people visit Nigeria for medical reasons just like they go to India and other countries? Can they not do that? Is that not a shame on you? And you actually sit there and all you're thinking about is the number of cars, the number of house help, the number of uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, 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 security. You're driving anywhere. People are people are protecting you. Why why would you need that if you had given the people what they need? Why would you need protection? Why do you think you should be the you know there's a saying the only tree in the forest? Why why should you be that? But when you come to England, you don't have protection. When you go to America, you don't know, you don't have protection. When you go back to your country, you're protected. Why is that the case? Because I, 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 I read. This is what I always say to everybody. Get knowledge. I read. This, these are some of the books that, if you're interested in finding out what is going on with Africa 
in particular. There's so many books out there. And some of them, which I have taken time to read, have not finished reading. There's one here, Africa Betrayed. And this is by this guy, George Aiti. Africa Betrayed. This is a continent that claims, oh yeah, we were, we, the, 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 the Western world came and, and took everything from us and they will not let us survive. And, but the question has been, for instance, Nigeria. Nigeria got independence in 1960. 1960. How many years is that? That this country is still not able to find its feet. Now let's pretend that, oh yeah, they took all they could. Right now we see the amount of money you so-called politicians are stealing right under our very noses. Good example, Abacha. You are able to amass all this amount of money, but nothing clicked in your way of thinking that I need an airport in my country. Nigeria hasn't even got an airline. The other day I saw a video somebody sent to me. Airline going from Ethiopia. No, from Kenya to, to New York. Direct flight. Kenyan Airways. Is that not a shame? Nigeria hasn't even got an airline. And then every Nigerian that wants to travel, we are looking for other substitute airlines. Even when Virgin came to Nigeria, Virgin could not survive Nigeria. Because the, 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 the corruption is so deep-rooted in every stage of that country. Every level. The big message here is you need to understand that in life you do not go with anything when it's over. And for sure, everybody is going to die. Everybody has a date with nature. For anything that's created, there's an end. Anything that has a beginning has an end. That's a big message. That's what you need to understand life. Ask yourself, what is my life about? What legacy do I want to leave behind? Another book I read, Africa Rising. Okay, so this person was thinking, Vijay Mahajan. He was thinking, oh yeah, there's hope. There's hope. But this is today that I'm telling you, as of November, cultism in Nigeria is a new way for politicians. It's a new way to terrorize the people. And we haven't, we haven't gone into 2019 when election is going to take place. Why do you want to be elected? That's the question you should ask yourself. Why do you want to be elected when four years now, River State still has not gone airport? And you call yourself a governor. Isn't that shameless? I mean, shameful? Are you not ashamed of the fact that you actually sit on the decks and you call yourself governor and people are running around you and you do not have an airport in your state? Qatar, a state, a country that's bigger than, that, that, that's smaller. Three times smaller, if not more. I don't even want to know what the population of Nigeria is, but I mean, uh, 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 River State is, but I know that Ogoni, as I went Ken was there, was 500,000 people. Qatar is 300,000 people, but Qatar is hosting the world 2022 for football. And you, River State, do not even have an airport with all the wealth that you have. And you get to see more books that I have looked at Things like that. Brainwashed. Tom Burrell. Hidden wealth of nations. Where are these wealth? The wealth and poverty of nations. David Landis. Okay, what we'll do, we put these titles in the link below because I know people will ask me what are these books. Stolen Legacy. How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Mm. 
the big message here is we need to inform our children we need to educate them we need to guide them i mean it was so sad that i went to nigeria i think two years ago or was it a year ago and i wanted to buy some history books for my children and i tell you even in the market where i searched all over there was no book there was no book so i asked him i said why is this the case and the young man who who supposedly owns um owns a bookstore said to me oh we've been told not to sell history books again because history is the, is the reason there's problem oh but what i think is you rather the youths stay in darkness you you rather the youths become ignorant you rather the youths are not informed they're not aware so that what you do to them they don't know what you're doing to them that's why such a rule could have come into place that's why such such a thing could have been allowed to go on in a country as big as nigeria with 200 million people nobody is allowed to know what their history is they shouldn't know that years ago children could have egg given to them in secondary school i remember when i was going to school fruits vegetables were were, were cooked for people to eat but today schooling in nigeria is a different story and yes you create the half-baked half-baked people hence because they are so half-baked whatever you whatever you sell to them they buy it you tell them here take this gun go and kill that person they can't ask you but why am i killing that person what did the person do you don't ask these people who are giving you this gun but how come there are no jobs is it that person who's supposed to give me a job or you mr politician that's supposed to give me a job no they don't ask any questions because you have filled their head with hate you fill their head with lies and it's only when people read and know what's going on because this is one of the biggest things that's happening to us especially us black people i read so many places where people say if you want to hide something from the black man put it in a book but that may be the case but i tell you nigeria it is worse because Nigerians who happily follow these politicians and allow them to give, feed them garbage and take on instructions. Instructions that are not beneficial. Look at what happened in, 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 in Egypt. They chased the politicians out of office. And just like Fala who said, no one should be sitting down there and say, my life is safe. And no one die, and no one quench, and one build house. I, I get wife, I get children. If you don't protect their future today, do you see your children getting anywhere tomorrow? Do you, I mean, this is today, you and I are here and we're saying this. Do you see a future for Nigerian children tomorrow with the way things are going in Nigeria right now? Because this bothers me. I, got, I have children. I have children. And just like the children of Israel who went to Egypt from the history books we, we, we read in the Bible, eventually God said, go back to the land I created for you. God told them. Joseph was having dreams. He ended up be, becoming prime minister in Egypt. But still God said, no. Go back to where I created for you. So I don't have any plans of my children and great-grandchildren being left out in somebody else's land. Yes, they may, they may have a part in it, but that's not where they come from. That's not where they come from. And it's so sad that Nigerians are dying on the sea, trying to run away from our country because of you politicians. 
and you are quite happy carrying on. So this has to stop now. This unnecessary killing for no reason has to stop. You have to start investing in these young children. You have to give them education. You have to give them knowledge. You have to give them skill. You have to give them hope. Some crazy political party came and said, was it in Nigeria they said hope? Was it hope? Yeah. Hope. But there was no hope. There was no hope. And now the country has gone worse and worse and worse. So if we don't speak, if we don't take action, if we don't do something, what future do we have for our children? When a country as large as that, with all its natural resources, cannot even have an airport. Is that not a shame? I was hearing somebody telling me about how when international people come to visit, international people, officials, they have to use armored vehicles or bulletproof cars. Why are you protecting people in a country if things are going okay. Do you not get the message that the reason this is happening is because people are disenfranchised? People are, are, are pushed around. People have no future. And so they then get into crime. Not that it's a solution, but that's where you push them. You pushed them there. You chose that place for them. By arming them, today you're arming them to go kill other people. What about you? What about your children? What about your generation, Sambon? Big message. Everybody dies. I mean, not a, a week ago, George Bush Sr. just died. His wife, Barbara, had died, I think, last year or was it earlier in the year? Now imagine the power they had. They went and invaded Iraq, which the junior, the son, followed up and carried on the same act. And all the terror that goes around the world. But they die. Even he dies. Does that not give you a message? Everybody dies. So, if you have a chance now, you're still awake and you're still breathing, the air that you did not create, you see yourself breathing it. Time you change your attitude to life. Time you understand life. Time you stop all this unnecessary killing. Time you stop destroying our young children. Time you start thinking of building that country. Time Nigeria starts to fit in with the rest of the world. I attended an event the other day, World Travel Market. This is an event where every country in the world that wants to be seen attends, owns a stall, shows the world what they are made of, invites people to come and visit them. That's what tourism is about. Tourism is another source of getting foreign exchange for your country without you exporting anything. Because what you're exporting is your services. People come to visit your country for your services, for your facilities, for your natural resources. They want to enjoy, they want to be free. But Nigeria did not even attend this event. You call yourself giant of Africa. You're not even at world tourism market. Rwanda was there having a big talk. Morocco. Gambia, Gambia, a tiny little country was there. And Nigeria, 200 million people, could not even hold a stand in a world international event. But you're so big that you can arm children to kill innocent people who contribute to the community. People who give good services and skills to the community are the ones you're picking out to be killed. So what are you planning for this community? What's your plan for this community?
they should eat up the garbage bin because eventually you're going to have a system where nobody can talk nobody can do anything nobody's of any value and you come with your millions of naira and maybe you give them that 10,000 naira to, to chew because there'll be nothing to they, they can't do anything they can't think they don't have a mind of their own so they cannot contribute anything to society you, you put that money in their hand and then you go abroad with your family your wife and then you go and enjoy where nobody will there's no there's no uh, 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 security guarding you in these parts of the world that you go to and then you go back to Nigeria and you have all those boys with a with a gun following you and protecting you it's a shame shame on you politicians shame on you lying to yourself that you're you're ruling a country when you're actually ruining a country destroying a country damaging country that God created and all his people I'm gonna end here today because there's so much more you're gonna be hearing from me so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video